Right now throughout the DVD course I think you'll have noticed that every landscape element that we've looked at in detail we've always tried to put it in the context of the complete landscape. So for example where we were doing trees then we've done some of the tutorials which had the trees set in a landscape rather than just in isolation. Now this is a windmill at the quaintly named village of Cly next the sea in North Norfolk uh, in England and it looks out across the North Sea towards Holland. What I want to look at specifically here are two things. First of all, when you have a cluster of buildings like this, just like some of the other elements that we've talked about, and you think, oh, hang on a minute, that looks a bit complex, all these roofs and windows. Well, again, it's a matter of simplification, and we'll have a look how simple this really is in a second. The other one thing I want to look at is that the roof is formed of those very distinctive pan tiles, which you find in different forms really all over the world. Right now all we have essentially is an upturned bucket or a vase shape here for the mill. Attached to it at various angles and various heights are just a whole series of oblongs. Right now here we have the upturned bucket or vase shape. In fact to me certainly in England this looks more like an upturned pint beer glass which is no good to anybody if it's that way up. You can see how quickly and roughly I'm doing this. There's a, a brick wall or a stone wall across the front of that and in front of that basically adjust fields from the view that we'll be looking at. This platform here sticks out at the side and it's basically just a couple of uprights. And then this bit here where these divided sails or fins are, if you start off with a circle and then just divide them up. I think there's actually eight sails I counted before but it doesn't really matter, it's, it's not vital. Don't worry about doing the actual framework of the sails, just start off with a central strut like that and you can see very very quickly how just by breaking this down into very simple components how quickly I've been able to do that. Okay let's now have a quick look how to paint these Pantar roofs and it really is very simple. I'm just going to use the number 8 brush and I'm going to start off with a very very watery wash of light red. And I'll just paint it, I'm not even going to draw anything. All I'm going to do is come down with here. I'm going to imagine that this is a three quarter view like that. Now while that's drying I'm just going to get a rather stronger mix of light red. I'm going to add I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to it. Now I'm just going to bring some darker streaks of colour down and all they will represent is the valleys in the pantile areas which aren't quite catching the light. I'm going to put one right at the end to, to give a nice definition to that. You see I'm leaving quite a thin light area for the, the highlight. Dab here on a hit and miss basis for the base of the tiles. And the reason I'm doing that, it gives that sort of slightly uneven effect that you want with the uh, with the pan tiles. I'm just going to sort of hit and miss here and there. The only thing you should make sure is that if you're going to hit and miss and leave some out, just make sure where you actually put the pan tiles in that they are actually in a straight line. Right now, that mossy effect is very typical of the stuff that grows on pan tiles. Don't want to overdo it. I probably should have put that and blended that in into the light base colour when I started. But better late than never, at least it shows if you forget about it to start with, you can put it in later on. Right, I've got a really thick strong colour of the light red, almost neat light red, very very little water, a little bit of ultramarine blue just to brown it off a little bit, but it's still very much a dark brown rather than the blue grey drying this off, taking most of that out of the brush. And then what I'm going to do is to simply drag this down like that, give ourselves a little bit of texture, a little bit of added interest. Now this is something I find I do all the time. When I'm starting off to practice a little technique or a little bit of a building or whatever the feature is, and you end up, before you know it, you think, oh, I'll just put a line here, I'll just put a bit of the, uh, the eaves there, and oh, I'll try a little window. And before you know it, you've got a cottage. Yeah, I know it's a scrappy little cottage, but this is what helps you develop as a painter. It's all this informal practice that you do 
in your own time with no pressure where you start to become much more adept and much freer in the way you paint. Now what I particularly want to get across in this demonstration is the need for balance in your composition. Now, when we talk about balance in a picture you can see immediately that all of the interest is down at this side of the picture. By having all the weight here the way we're going to balance this out is by having some reeds on this side and some stronger darker colour in this side in this corner of the picture and what I'll also do is when I come to put the breezy clouds in I'll have some fairly strong dark blue sky in this area here and these strong colours top and bottom and on, on this side of the picture will in that way help to counterbalance the picture here. Right first things first what I'm going to do is to just take some plain water and scrub it across the whole of the sky area. Very pale wash of raw sienna there like that into the base of the sky. Just take that down across the marshes here and into that foreground. Just helps to warm it up slightly particularly there because even though that's only a light colour you can see already it's starting to add some strength on this side of the picture going to have a big dominant cloud here I don't want again I want, don't want two or three clouds hanging in the sky like bits of cotton wool. Right now I brought in some light red and a little touch of permanent rose added it to the ultramarine blue and that's going to give us some nice cloud shadow. Again this is an area that's starting to dry off so you've got to be fairly quick just drag that out towards the front of where the, uh, the clouds are Catch that little bit of uh, cloud shadow there. And then as we get down here, lower down the horizon, these cloud shadows are going to get a little bit weaker, so I'm adding a little bit of water to them. So we've still got the nice breezy effect, but it's easing off further away into the distant horizon. 